I'm Andy Fisher, WNAW News. At eight minutes past ten, time for the Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of love and hate with Cicely Tyson as your hostess. Here's a preview. That is, it will look and sound right with actors on the stage. How does it go? What's all there on the page? Show me. Well, uh, the man enters and... Come here on the sofa and show me. What? Come on. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Hello, I'm Stan Martin. It's sad that many youngsters feel the only way they can make their mark on our town is with a destructive act or a smear of graffiti. One building on New York's Lower East Side stands apart from the others. Its walls are spotless inside and out. The youngsters who work and play there have earned the respect of the entire city, just as they've learned to respect themselves. I'm talking about the Boys Brotherhood Republic. The BBR has been helping underprivileged boys work their way out of the slums for almost 50 years by giving them the responsibility of governing and policing themselves. The BBR helps create a set of values which guide its members all their lives. I know because I was a member from the time I was six, and the BBR helped change my life. It's doing the same right now for hundreds of youngsters with no other place to turn but the streets. Help the BBR turn out solid citizens. Please send whatever financial support you can to the Boys Brotherhood Republic, 888 East 6th Street, New York, 10009. Thank you. Look, there's a couple of Salvation Army guys over there. You know, the Salvation Army operates these uh, core community centers all over the country where everyone from kids to senior citizens can make new friends and... Hey, wait a second. How do you know all this about the Salvation Army? Well, I spoke with one of their officers the other day, and I asked him what the Salvation Army did. Come on. They pick up old clothes and furniture. Right. But what you don't know is they operate daycare centers, senior citizen homes, summer camps, and disaster relief services for areas that are stricken with tornadoes, floods... Wow, out. the Salvation Army's into all that? I had no idea. That's right. And the Salvation Army has been in America for nearly 100 years. No kidding. 1980 is the 100th anniversary of the Salvation Army in the United States. Wow, that's some tradition. If you need help with a problem, or can help... Call your local Salvation Army today. This is Cicely Tyson. My name is James Markham. I am a playwright, and I live in a penthouse apartment high above Riverside Drive. When I was a young man, some years ago to be sure, I often heard from an aunt renowned in our family for her folk wisdom that all is not always as it appears to be. I am with you now to relate a series of events which will prove beyond any doubt that my aunt knew whereof she spoke. Mildred, is this clock correct? Mr. Markham, you paid $3,000 for that antique clock when $3,000 was a lot of money. So of course it's not correct. It's three minutes off. It's nine o'clock. That's right. And you've been pacing and waiting and asking me the time since seven. Give us, take three minutes. You want I should put the hors d'oeuvres back in the icebox? Refrigerator, Mildred, not icebox. None of us are getting any younger, Mr. Markham. And that's what they call it when I grew up. Your tie's straight. Stop fiddling with it. I'm leaving now. When you go down, tell the doorman that I can't see her. Huh? Who? Who are you waiting for? What's the big secret? I mean, I can't see anyone tonight. I'm... I'm indisposed. You're what? Sick? Mr. Markham, you're never sick. What's the deal? Are you up to something? And that's just the beginning of our story. Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week, brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Who's Who, by P.M. Klepper. Our stars, Fletcher Markle and Noel North. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. When I need advice, I go to my mom. Why not? It's free. Now that I'm married and moving into a new house, 
I want all the advice I can get. So when Mom says shop Sears, I listen. You should. Sears is a great help on those big items you'll need for your new home. Major appliances like washers, dryers, and refrigerators. They'll deliver, install, and service. I always depend on Sears. You should, too. Sears, 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 where America shops. The next time you hear a strange noise in the night, turn on your lights in seconds without leaving your bed. It's now possible with Sears' new home control system. Get a feeling of added security thanks to the convenient command console that controls up to 16 lights, lamps, or appliances from one location. This $39.99 console sends coded signals to lamp, wall switch, or appliance modules available at $13.99 or $14.99 each. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Pink lemonade, warm breezes, and you sitting on your porch wearing a sundress from Sears. Delightful. Even more delightful, these sundresses are a Sears special purchase. So though not reduced, they're an exceptional value. And they're 100% cotton in flounces, tears, smock designs, and more. All sweet and dainty. Misses are junior sizes. Stroll down to Sears now for your special purchase sundress while quantities last. And enjoy this good old summertime. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. Stores. When last we spoke, I was being asked a series of questions. Continue, please. Are you sick, Mr. Markham? I said so, didn't I? Well, I won't leave you then. Yes, yes. Go on. I'm all right. You're sick, and you're all right? I, I just don't want to... To see someone, yes. But why didn't you just say so? Why do you want to make up an excuse about being sick? It was the only thing I could think of. You, who write stories for a living? I write plays. Same difference. No, plays are all talk, like me. Have you been drinking? No. Why? Only sad drunks usually run themselves down like that. Just give the doorman my message that I don't want to see anyone. Now, where's that novel, the book with the yellow and pink cover? I put it on that shelf. You keep leaving it around. I keep leaving it around because it's part of my work, maybe. I'll get it. No, I'm not here. Why, Mr. Markham, I can see her through the peephole. Oh, nothing to be scared of. She's just a girl with a bicycle. A what? I swear she's got a bicycle with her. Hi, I'm expected. You may be, but not that bicycle with its muddy wheels. You, Mr. Markham? You were expecting me, right? I was, and I wasn't. Don't be mad because I'm late. I'm never on time. You ride a bicycle in Manhattan? I'm a wild bird who loves to fly. You're a freewheeling turkey. Standing there with your bicycle, you remind me of Ethel Barrymore. Who? Her entrance in the corn is green. Oh. Betty Davis did the role in the motion picture. Didn't see it. Catherine Hepburn on television. Am I hitting the correct level yet? Where can I park my bike? Leave it there in the hall. Good night, Mr. Markham. I hope you'll be feeling better soon. You're not feeling well? I'm great with remedies. What's wrong? I, well, uh, nothing. Don't be bashful. I can't be embarrassed. Please, I... Oh, come on. Don't be like those women who are always hinting at some vague female complaint. I just don't feel like myself, that's all. Kind of achy and tired? Uh, yes, something like that. A good rub down helps no matter what you got. How can you be sick with your coat on? What? Sitting around in your own apartment, fully dressed. Coat and tie and all. You can't be sick like that. Take off your coat and shirt, and I'll massage your back. No, no, please. Come on, let go of your coat. <sighs> okay, keep your shirt on, as they say. Lie down. Really? This isn't My what... hands are warm, and I promise not to tickle. <sighs> there. How does that feel? Well, uh, stimulating. Uh, 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 too hard? I feel almost too healthy. Thank you, Tony. Your name is really Tony? Yes, Tony, with an I. What? Tony, it's spelled T-O-N-I, not with a Y. That's a boy's name. Tony with an I. How Tony? I don't get you. Tony, the kind of Tony that means high-toned, stylish. Never heard of that. 
Must be an old-fashioned word. I'm an old-fashioned person. Tony, I have a Tony. You have a what? A Tony. You don't know what a Tony Award is? It's given for outstanding work on the New York stage. Oh, like in television, the Emmy. You could say that. I did say that. You don't know what a Tony is, yet you want to write a play. Maybe I want to write a play. What'd you think of it? My novel there, that festive summer? Isn't it an icky cover? Yellow and pink? It's very good. The cover? The story. Well written. Are you going to help me adapt it for the stage? If I decide to do it. This producer wants to put it on Broadway, and he says you write plays. That right? Yes, I write plays. Did you think I got that Tony Award for being the best usher? Okay, okay, you write plays. Let's face it, I'm ignorant. In the town where I was brought up, there weren't any stage plays. Well, they did have books, didn't they? Such as in my library here. Wow, you got a lot of them. Who are those guys on the wall? All those pictures. Who are... Uh, portraits of the great playwrights. Sophocles, Plautus, Marlowe, Johnson, Shakespeare. Oh, yes, I recognize him. Who's that? Looks like an old vaudeville performer. That's Moliere, the greatest writer of French comedy. Hmm. May I get you a drink? What do you got? Everything. Anything. Name your poison. What? That's another old expression. I'm not used to a choice. Places I go, it's beer or cheap muscatel. Now this uh, 20-year-old scotch, just a bit younger than you are, is very good. Or if you like, I'll break out a bottle of champagne. Got diet soda? No. Some mineral water will be fine. You expecting someone else? No. What's all this food? Hors d'oeuvre. For you. I'm an honored guest, huh? <laughs> I'll have some. Caviar? Liver pate? I hate this kind of junk. Perhaps next time, if there is a next time, Mildred, my housekeeper, will send out for a pizza. Your novel has possibilities as a stage play. We might make it work. I told the producer I'd think about it. Doesn't the prospect of having a play on Broadway excite you? Perhaps. Well, if you say it like that, obviously it doesn't mean much, and you shouldn't get involved. Involved? What's involved? You write a play, it's put on, so? It's a long, laborious, frightening process, young lady. Perhaps you should stick to novels. I don't know that I intend to do that either. I wrote a book that doesn't make me a lifetime writer. I just wrote down a lot of personal stuff I wanted to get off my chest. You could have told a bartender. Don't make me out a dedicated author. I'm not trying to make you anything. I'm trying to figure you out. It's simple. My publisher wants a big stage and screen hit out of this first novel, so I'll be rich and happy, and I'll give him my second novel, in case I should write one. And the stage producer put me in touch with you. They wanted an experienced old pro to help me. I really don't know if I have the time. So many other projects and my social life is full. Parties, openings, club acts to catch, weekends in the country. Well, I'll tell them that we met and... Uh, uh, I didn't say no. You don't seem overly enthused. As with you. But we might work together and make something of that festive summer. Okay, let's try it. See how it goes for a few days, at least. You'd better get to bed and get over whatever you got. I have a date with Al. It was for much earlier, but as I say, I'm never on time. Tomorrow morning, we'll begin. Tomorrow already? Well, okay. Get well. I assure you, I'll be in top shape. I couldn't take another of your massages. National Automotive Sale. Dirt inside your shock absorbers can cause them to fail. Get Sears heavy-duty plush shocks with a self-cleaning wiper ring. 
On sale now, only $7.99 each. You save 20%. Installation available. And save now on Sears SuperGuard Steel Belted Radial Tires. Steel Belted Strength, Smooth Ride, Radial Performance. Super Values, too. Save $40 to $76 on a set of four. Sale ends June 30th at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop. Why not ruffle up a window with tradition from Sears Open Hearth Collection? Our inheritance Cape Cod curtains have plenty of big, fluffy ruffles for that traditional New England look that's become an American favorite. They're an easy care permapressed fabric made from 65% Codell polyester and 35% cotton, completely machine washable. Choose from 14 distinctive colors, one of the largest selections to be found anywhere. So carry on a decorating tradition, the Cape Cod look from Sears, available at most larger Sears retail stores. They wear them in Alaska, in Texas, in Maine. Wherever the territory's tough, the kids wear Sears Tough Skins, the toughest jeans in Sears Tough Jeans territory. Fashioned from a permapress pry blend fabric so tough, kids can actually jump on trampolines made from it. Sears Tough Skins in boys and girls sizes. Now in latest spring colors, styles, patterns. Brushed finish, too. You have tough kids, Sears has tough skins. Only in the children's store at most larger Sears retail stores and through the catalog. made. The question it posed was a simple one. Could a young and immature girl contribute anything worthwhile to a business arrangement with an older, wiser, more mature and creative person such as me? It occurred to me at the time that it made an interesting problem. More call for Mr. Markham? No. My, aren't we grouchy today? Uh... No, the clock isn't correct. It's three minutes off, so it's exactly one. She was supposed to... to be here early in the morning. I know, but she's here now. Good morning. Good afternoon. I beat him to that. Good morning, Mr. Markham. Ooh, it's colder in here than outside. If there's nothing more, Mr. Markham, <clears throat> I'll be leaving. Thank you, Mildred. See you tomorrow. What's this? Just some preliminary sketches of the first scenes. Of the play? So many pages. I just tossed them off during the night. I sometimes work all night. I don't think I can do that. Yes, I imagine. What with Al and all. Al? Me and Al? What are you implying? Well, don't get upset. I'm not going to lecture. About what? Well, if you leave here late in the evening for a date with Al and you come back the next afternoon wearing the very same clothes and... Ah, I see, Sherlock Holmes. You deduce that I haven't been back to my place all night. It's none of my business. Right. You must realize how we wild young people are. However, for your information, I may wear the same outfit for a week. Clean underwear, of course. I won't speculate any more. If we are to work together, we will have to adjust our schedules to coincide. I can work any time. Fine. Now? Now? I don't feel like it now. Tony, the basic problem with the tone of the play is trying to reconcile the tragedy of the father with the commonplace comedy of young love. Whoa, wait just one minute. Tragedy of the father? The old man isn't tragic. And that about being commonplace? Oh, come, Tony. You can't really believe that this is such an unusual story of young love. It's the ordinary story of millions of girls. Ordinary? This is different. I don't understand your umbrage. I think you've handled the situation admirably subtly, allowing the reader to enjoy the humorous aspects of young puppy love. There was nothing subtly humorous about this puppy love. You're joking. You mean you didn't intend it to be funny? Funny? Yes. Well, it's touching, of course, in a lightweight sort of way, but, my dear, you'll know the difference when a real love, a mature love, comes along. You? Me. Me? Surely you don't think that I... I mean that you and me... When it comes to women, you can't trust any guy, no matter what his age. You bring me here and always send the housekeeper away. In the first place, young lady, it's presumptuous of you to think you're my type. Secondly, you have the gall to suggest that were I in the mood to indulge in a romantic interlude, I would have to resort to an elaborate procedure. I assure you, I have no monkey business in mind, just the business of playwriting. 
business? Yes, a skillful craft. One must craft a play to appeal to an entire audience, not just moonstruck teenage girls. Why, it'll be difficult enough to try to surmount your title that festive summer. I can just hear the soupy title song for the Beach Party movie version. For your information, Beach Party movies were passe years ago, but then so were you. <laughs> Sears Radio Theater will continue after this message from your local station. Hello, I'm Robert Merrill. Think of how many songs we have that celebrate the joys of being able to see. Yes, good vision is something to sing about. There'll be birds over. But today, a million people run the risk of losing that joy of seeing. They have glaucoma. And they don't even know about it. They feel no pain, so they take no action. Glaucoma can easily be detected, and its progress definitely halted. People over 35 should be tested for glaucoma every two years, oftener if a member of the family has the disease. Undetected cases of glaucoma contribute to the more than half of all blindness that is needless. Don't let your family's eyes become part of that statistic. To learn more, write to Prevent Blindness, 79 Madison Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. What in the World Happened in June? Brought to you by your local Navy recruiter. June is Admissions Day for New Hampshire and Virginia, admitted in 1788, Kentucky in 1792, Tennessee in 1796, Arkansas in 1836, and West Virginia in 1863 as our 35th state. The Continental Congress appointed a committee to draft the Declaration of Independence in June of 1776. In June of 1782, the design for the Great Seal of the United States was adopted by Congress. The U.S. Navy Yard at Portsmouth, New Hampshire, was purchased in June of 1800. The first course in flight instruction was started in June of 1925 at the U.S. Naval Academy. In June of 1935, the self-help organization Alcoholics Anonymous was created. In June of 1966, the U.S. achieved the first soft landing on the moon. What in the World Happened in June is brought to you by your local Navy recruiter who will answer your questions about Navy opportunity or in the continental United States, call 800-841-8000. In Georgia, 800-342-5855. <laughs> I know, sweetie. I meant to be there. I know what time it is. It's six in the evening on the dot. So I'm three minutes off. No, I didn't call to argue. I just wanted to say I'm sorry I didn't meet you. You couldn't reach me at home because I'm not at home. Yes, up at his place. He's coming back, Al. I gotta go. Goodbye. Good evening. And just how did you... Uh, Mildred let me in before she left. You'll have to give me a key. Mildred said this is your haircut day. I wasn't expecting you, today or ever. Never expect or don't expect anything of me. I read your outline for the play. It's not bad. You're too kind. But about that love scene... It's difficult. It's a case of taking a stream of consciousness passage from the pages of a book and presenting it visually. It'll play. It'll what? It will play. That is, it will look and sound right with actors on the stage. How does it go? What's well, all there on the page? Show me. Well, uh, the man enters and... Come here on the sofa and show me. What? Come on. Now then. He takes her by the shoulders. Demonstrate. And draws her to him. He looks into her eyes and says something about emeralds. I can't recall, and I can't read the page without my glasses. Her eyes aren't green. They're gray. Well, you made the girl's eyes gray, but your own are green as emeralds. He draws her closer and says, I've changed since I met you. All for the better. Don't say anything. You can't imagine what it's done for me, having you come into my life. You walked through that door, fresh, young, pretty, no, beautiful. 
bringing life to me again. I'm not young, and I hate to think of trying to survive a rebuff from someone about whom I care so much. Love is not too strong a word. Oh, my, my dear darling man. <laughs> you see, I was right. Your young heroine could be seduced, not just strong-armed. You were just acting. <sighs> what are you trying to prove? Why did you want to make a fool out of me? Well, it was just a dramatic exercise. I, I mean, I didn't think of it that way. You wanted to teach me a lesson, to humiliate me. And you did. I'd better go. Please don't. What's really deeply disappointing, hurtful, painful, is that I didn't expect anything so cruel from you. You of all people, so kind, so considerate, such a gentleman. Well, I... Please. Uh, I'm stupid. sorry. I... I... The, the the good part is, it, is that there isn't anything far-fetched about it. Why wouldn't a country clod like me be flattered to have a distinguished writer who is also distinguished-looking show an interest in her? Seduced? You wouldn't have even had to say, Baby, love me. All you'd have to do was snap your fingers. Darling. Get lost. What? I hope you don't get a week of sleep tonight thinking about it. This charade. Damn, the master outwitted at his own game. <laughs> I wonder how loudly I'd have to snap my fingers. <laughs> I can't keep working on and on like this. You young people, learn not to burn the candle at both ends. Live moderately as I do. Never been sick a day in my life. Let's take a break. You want some coffee or a soda? When I say break, I mean let's break out of here. We do nothing but stay here and work. We never go out for a walk or to an art gallery or out to lunch. I've come to the conclusion, Mr. James Markham, that you don't want to be seen with me. What are you babbling about? I'm serious. You think I'm a gutter snipe. You'd be ashamed to be seen in public with me, to have your friends know you're working with me. Now, to show you how ridiculous that is, I'll tell you what. I'll give a party and introduce you to everybody. There'll be celebrities, entertainers, writers, some of the finest minds around. No, no, don't do that. I'd have nothing to say to them. You'll be there to listen. But You I... can't have it both ways. First complaining I don't introduce you to my friends, and then complaining that you'd be out of your element so you don't want to meet my friends. This weekend, a party. <laughs> Why did you insult that European diplomat? I never saw a real-life person with a monocle before, and I told but him... But you'd only seen one on a dummy, Charlie McCarthy. Save that line for your second novel. You out of catsup? I could not be out of catsup because I never have any. What are you, a food freak? What would you use catsup on, not that beef stroganoff? I'll see what you have in the kitchen to cover the tape. Hey, James! Margaret, darling, how are you? Nice of you to come. Oh, I always come to the parties the distinguished Mr. Markham gives. Doesn't happen often these days. What's the occasion? I just wanted to introduce someone. Then it's true. You and... Oh, no. No, Margaret. After all the tempting offers you've had from a variety of women and turned down graciously, of course... Is that the pretty little thing? Well, uh, yes, that's Tony. Ah, uh, how quaint. You don't usually see denim cut-offs at a dinner party. <laughs> Introduce us, James. Uh, Tony, I, I want you to meet Margaret Mason. How do you do? Hello. Aren't you going to say something flattering? That you like my work? What do you do? Uh, Tony... Margaret has been a star of stage and screen for longer than you've been alive. Oh, sorry, Miss Mason. Are you one of Jim's old flames? Neither. Neither flame nor old. 
And I've never heard anyone call James Markham Jim, not even his mother. I must circulate. Tony, mind your manners. Why do you dislike me, Tony? I don't know you well enough to dislike you. Resent me, then. Unfortunately, I'm not any sort of rival to you for James Markham. I'm not in competition for James Markham. But I guess I'm greedy. I want him all to myself while we're working on this play. Oh, oh you have him all to yourself. He doesn't do anything but write. He told me about his busy schedule, parties, openings, weekends in the country. <laughs> what nonsense. I haven't seen him at a party for years. He hasn't been out since his wife died and his plays began to bomb. So you have him, little one. I should resent you. You like him or beyond? He has many lovable qualities, several of which only a woman of my age can appreciate. He admires you. Why aren't you two together? If I knew that, young one, we'd be together. Why don't you try to get along? Be gracious in your ignorance. I told you not to talk, but to listen. You aren't listening. If you did, you'd hear that most of these celebrities talk just like ordinary people ordinarily do at parties. Surface talk. All right. Near at my parties and my acquaintances. How about those in your social circle? What? You give a party. Let me in on the wild and wonderful doings and the productive ideas of your bohemian world. But I... I'm challenging you. Okay. Okay, you're on. <laughs> or a pink captain like that man over there? I would wager by and by that he's a bookkeeper or a store clerk in daylight hours. Well, well yes, he is. But no phony like my high-toned friend, right? I, I can't hear you. Yes, that ghastly music. Uh, it's very today. And I am very yesterday, as you keep pointing out. Where's Al? Who? Who? Al. Your Al. Where is he? It's just what I was going to ask, Tony. I couldn't help overhearing. Where's Al? Hello, Pete. Goodbye, Pete. Hey, you didn't invite Al. He's probably strung out someplace. Big night. Al. So long, Pete. Okay, okay. You didn't invite Al. But you bring on this old goat? Pay no attention. To what? To the fact that your friends are as narrow-minded as mine. What do you mean? My acquaintances at that shallow cocktail party thought I was a dirty old man robbing the cradle and that you have a father complex. Your friends feel the same way with the additional innuendo that you're being unfaithful to good old Al, the mystery lover. To answer your question, my dear, your friends are no better or worse than mine. <laughs> The next time you hear a strange noise in the night, turn on your lights in seconds without leaving your bed. It's now possible with Sears' new home control system. Get a feeling of added security thanks to the convenient command console that controls up to 16 lights, lamps, or appliances from one location. This $39.99 console sends coded signals to lamp, wall switch, or appliance modules available at $13.99 or $14.99 each. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Welcome summer with open arms in a sleeveless knit shirt from Sears. Tailored as can be, with a pert little collar and pocket, but bare, 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 because each shirt's completely sleeveless. Cool on the go and great for carefree sunning. Choose several in colorful solids and prints of Easy Care Polyester and Cotton Knit. You'll find summer goes arm in arm with sleeveless shirts in misses and women's sizes in the sportswear department at Sears. Sears wants to break the ice when it comes to buying a Kenmore refrigerator. So we're taking $50 to $100 off three models through June 30th. You save $100 on the 19 cubic foot side-by-side -side and $70 on the 17 cubic foot top freezer refrigerator. Both have automatic ice makers and Sears exclusive humid drawer. Save $50 on a Kenmore 17 cubic foot refrigerator freezer without ice maker. All are frostless. Kenmore. Solid as Sears. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii.
All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. Cicely Tyson again. And here's the concluding act of our story. Yes? Who is it? Al. Who? Al? Yes. Wait a moment. You're not Al. Yes, I am. No, I can see you through the peephole. You don't have a beard and you're wearing a suit, a nice suit. Yes, but, but I'm still Al. No, you're a salesman. That's true, Mr. Markham. I sell socks and bonds, but I'm still Al. The Al she talks about? I guess so. Now, what, is, what, what is all this, Mr. Markham, about a, a beard and a suit? Why should I have one and not the other, or whatever? If you are the Al that Tony speaks of, I expected you to have a beard and perhaps shaggy shoulder-length hair and be wearing a black leather jacket. You'd weigh 260 pounds, have a hangover from liquor, or worse, be jealous I even looked at her and be able to throw her over your shoulder to carry her off like a caveman. <laughs> Me? Instead, you're a presentable young business type. You're here to sell me stocks and bonds? No, no, a, a, a personal matter. Ah. Drink? Yes, thanks. If you don't mind sharing it, I'll have some of that sherry. Mm, you have much better taste in liquids than your... your, uh, friend, Tony. Oh, no, Tony taught me all I know about rare and expensive wines. She's an expert. Tony? Cheap Muscatel Tony? Here. Uh, thanks. Cheers. Cheers. This Tony can't be that Tony, so you must be mistaking me for someone else. No, no, you're James Markham, the famous playwright. For a long time, Tony has talked of nobody else. Now I know you're mistaken. Tony never heard of me before some producer suggested we collaborate, and that was only recently. No, you're mistaken. Tony picked you out to work with her. For years, she's admired your work. Quote, the best of modern playwrights, unquote. My Tony hasn't read or seen two plays in her life. Why, she didn't know any one of these playwrights on the wall there, except Shakespeare, which any grade school pupil knows, Sophocles, Marlowe, Moliere, the prince of French comedy. She thought he was an old-time vaudeville performer. Moliere? <laughs> Are you kidding? In college, Tony did her master's thesis on Moliere. In French. She what? You didn't see through her. You, a student of people. I suppose she wants you to believe she's a natural, untutored prodigy. Hmm. She admires you, Mr. Markham, because of what you've achieved in the world of writing. Tony doesn't care about writing. Oh, about as much as she doesn't care about breathing. What Tony really wants and needs is a secure nest with no hassles where she can be free to write. That wild bird in a secure nest? Can't you provide that nest? Yes. So could you. But you have no right to her, Mr. Markham. You've had your life. Let Tony and me have ours. Think what's good for her and her long-range happiness. What's the book, Jim? A uh, collected plays of Moliere, the vaudeville performer there on the wall. A producer's asked me to do a modernized version of one of his plays... It's an early work titled Les Femmes Savantes. I know femme means women or ladies. Uh, I guess savant must be a family name. It's not one of his early works, and the title translates The Learned Ladies. Uh-oh. It's so early in the morning I wasn't thinking. <laughs> yes, my wild, untutored songbird. Al told me of your excellent upbringing. You deceived me about Al, too. You led me to believe that he was a wild-eyed savage taking his pleasure where he could grab it. And he's a respectable young man who wants to marry you, which seems an honorable intention. Marriage seems to be in again these days. I'm not everybody. I'm me. I don't want to be like everybody else. I want to be different. Look, the reason I seem to be interfering in your life... Seem to be? ...is because I like you very much. I care too much about you to have you... You care? No way. You care for me as a, as a source for a play. Wrong. Tony, if you don't stop this posturing, you'll become what you want everyone to think you are. You act cheap, you talk cheap. The thing you do well is right. 
You're incredibly talented in that, but you're still a child in temperament. And you'll dissipate that talent unless you learn discipline. Speaking of posturing, how about you? Me? Yeah. First you lie to me about your social life. You don't have one. Then you act so nonchalant about whether you'll work on this play or not, when the truth is you're dying to write another hit. You want it so bad you can taste it. Is there no end to your vulgar expressions? Under all that formal, gentlemanly veneer is just one thing, pure naked ambition. It's true. I do concentrate on writing. One can't expend energy in every direction and still accomplish anything. At your age, you mean? Touché. Well, you're always twitting me about my youth. The difference is you have a chance of getting over youth. Where's my coat? Draped over the desk where you threw it. I won't be back. I'll send you a gift. You don't have to send me anything. A farewell gift. When I get to the end, I'll send you my completed draft of the play. But... Do with it as you will. Use it as shelf paper or to start a fire in the hearth. I give it to you. Hurry up, Al. Finish those pages. I want to read them. I, I can't hurry too fast. You're studying Jim's script like it was a financial sheet. I want to make sure I gather the significance of this. It's just a draft of a play. Mm, he's, he's got things in here that aren't in your novel. Such as? Such as he has the father contemplating suicide. You're joking. No. And it's written with great conviction. Lord, oh no. You told me how Mr. Markham identified with the father in the book. And like he was attempting to be a father figure to you. Who could that be at this time of night? Hello? Hello, Tony? Yes, who's this? Margaret Mason, the old actress, remember? Sure. What is it? I've been trying for hours to get James on the phone. No answer. I know he's in his apartment. Well, then why wouldn't he answer? What could be wrong? Look, Miss Mason, I don't want to alarm you, but I think something serious is going on. What? No time to explain. If you want, meet me and Al at Jim's apartment as soon as you can make it. Oh, you don't really think that what he wrote in the play about suicide, that he try something like that in real life? Suicide? Suicide? What are you saying? James! Al, just get the door open. Jim! Jim! James, are you in there? I'd better use my key. Ah, oh, good. He didn't put the chain on. I hear something. What? What is it? Oh, it sounded like a shot. Well, then you're right. He shot himself. Oh, hurry. What is it? What's all the noise? Who's there? Oh, Jim. He, he looks all right. Sort of. Thank goodness you missed. Missed what? That shot we heard. Shot? What shot? Is someone shooting? That bang. Oh, that. I just uncorked another bottle of champagne. Pop. Leave it to James Markham to commit suicide by drinking himself to death with the best French wine. What are you all doing here? I'm not expecting guests. No guests come to see me. Is my tie straight? You're not wearing a tie, sir. I'll make you some coffee. No, you don't. I've invested too much time and expensive champagne to get to my present state of fogginess for you to try to clear my head with that molasses-like brew of yours. I'm amazed. Even drunk he can talk like that. Drunk? And with no necktie. It must be a relief to all of you to discover that James Markham is human after all. Jim, it's good. What? What's good? The play. I loved it. So did Al. Ah, Al, there you are. Were you here a minute ago? I didn't see you. I <laughs> didn't see much, clearly at least. Good evening, Al, or good morning, whatever. Al, have you and Tony yet reached, as they say, an understanding? Yes. I would never commit suicide. What are you talking about, Tony? You know what I'm talking about, that scene concerning the father. Oh, yes, I remember it <clears throat> vaguely. Not vaguely. You made that man contemplate suicide so vividly. There's nothing like that in my novel. All the implications are there. The old man is, well, an old man. He feels useless, unwanted. 
James, how could you identify with that? No, Margaret. You felt like my father? Well, my father wasn't like that at all. And I didn't say he was. And you aren't like that either. You've tried to make it tragic again. We went all through that once. Tragic. <laughs> You're so implausibly young in your outlook. Young? I must agree with her, Mr. Markham. Being old doesn't mean one has exclusive rights to problems. Old or young, life can be cruddy, and life can be wonderful. And I'm here to help you make a marvelous play out of this. We're going to do some daring things. We're going to risk and reach. Really? You and me? You're returning. It'll give us both something to live for. That dark, gloomy, suicidal stuff is no place in that festive summer. And about that carnival scene... We aren't going to discuss work now. You're the one who's always saying we should get down to work. Well, we're going to work, and we'll work till we get it right. Tony, it's almost sunrise. Well, if nobody will let us work, let's go out for some supper or breakfast. Marvelous idea. Capital. Some of those little greasy spoon cafes are still open. You, James, you go out... We'll show him some people in life. Let's go. I have to be at work in a few hours. Oh, come over here on your lunch hour and pick me up. Okay. How romantic. Well, Margaret, since the young'uns will be abandoning me this afternoon, how about you and I? I don't know what you have in mind, James, you attractive old devil. But fine. It's a date. <laughs> The room held several Sears brass-plated lamps, one switched on. The finely plated antique satin shade illuminated the furniture softly. Another lamp turned on, and another. The patio doors blew open. The green brass-plated lamp nearby, with its heavy base built for stability, did not budge. The room glowed in the brassy elegance that these Sears best lamps command. Create your own hauntingly elegant moods with Sears brass-plated lamps at most larger Sears retail stores. The word's out and spreading fast about the jeans from Sears Men's Store that grow beautifully. It's a sure sign they're feeling fine and feeling good. For the denim that keeps going strong a long time. Get them trim cut, regular cut, even get them pre-washed. The jeans that grow beautifully. Now at most Sears retail stores. Sears National Automotive Sale. Dirt inside your shock absorbers can cause them to fail. Get Sears Heavy Duty Plus Shocks with a self-cleaning wiper ring. On sale now, only $7.99 each. You save 20%. Installation available. And save now on Sears SuperGuard Steel Belted Radio Tires. Steel Belted Strength, Smooth Ride, Radio Performance. Super Values, too. Save $40 to $76 on a set of four. Sale ends June 30th at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop. Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Who's Who was written by P.M. Clipper, produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your hostess was Cicely Tyson. Our stars were Fletcher Markle and Noel North. Featured in the cast were Helen Martin, Mary Jane Croft, Lou Horn, and Stanley Director. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI.